Hi and welcome to our video 19.1 acids and bases. First we're going to take a look at acids and the main definition of acid and right, it's called the Arrhenius definition of acids are acids are molecules that dissolve in water to produce an H3O plus hydronium ion as <clears throat> the positively charged ion in solution. So for example, if we take HCl, which is hydrochloric acid, dissolve it in water, right? the HCl breaks apart into an H plus and a Cl minus. That H plus joins with the H2O. Here's your oxygen, here's a hydrogen, here's a hydrogen. Right? And oxygen has two lone pairs of an electrons. This H plus, which is positively charged, sees these negatively charged electrons and it's like, hey, how's it going? And joins to form an H3O plus ion, which is aqueous, it's dissolved in the water, and these chlorine or chloride ions. So in general, that's the definition of an acid. All right, let's look at some properties of acids. Acids react with metals above the H2 on table J to form hydrogen gas and a salt. So if you take any of these metals and put them in an acid, they're going to react and they're going to give off hydrogen gas and it's going to make a salt. Acids have a pH of less than 7. A little bit later we're going to look on the pH scale and talk a little bit more about what that means. Now you've tasted these before. A dilute solution of an acid tastes sour. You've had that with uh, lemonade, right? Because uh, lemons contain citric acid. It's going to taste sour. Vinegar is acetic acid taste sour. <clears throat> when we're testing for acids, an acid will turn phenolphthalein solution clear, it'll turn litmus paper red, and it'll turn the indicator bromothymol blue yellow. And acids neutralize bases. <clears throat> in a little while we're going to see bases, <clears throat> bases neutralize acids, but in general they neutralize one another. Now, we went over this when we were talking about naming different molecules. And on your reference table, you have some names of common acids. HCl is hydrochloric acid, HNO3 is nitric acid, etc., etc. So, first kind we're going to talk about is a binary acid, which is just an H plus and a non metal. And for that, we'll say hydro something ic acid. So HCl, which is hydrogen and a nonmetal, is hydrochloric, the chlor comes from chlorine, chloric acid. So HBr would be hydrobromic acid. So what do you think HF would be? Ternary acids, which is an H plus and a polyatomic ion, and here's just a couple of different polyatomic ions from table E. You just have the polyatomic ion name, okay? If the polyatomic if the polyatomic ion ends in eight, it becomes ic acid. So if we take nitrate, that would be nitric acid. Notice there's no hydro. If the polyatomic ion ends in ide, like cyanide, becomes cyanic acid. If the polyatomic ion ends in ite, like nitrite, it'll become nitrous acid. Okay, so bases are in one sense the opposites of acids but not really quite you can't just memorize them as such so once again we're going with the Arrhenius definition here bases are ionic compounds that dissolve in water to produce 
hydroxide OH minus ions as the negatively charged ion in the solution. So if we take NaOH, sodium hydroxide, when we dissolve it in water, it dissociates into Na plus 1 ions and hydroxide ions are produced. And the most common bases that we'll see are usually going to be something hydroxide. They're going to end in that OH for hydroxide. All right, so some properties. Bases can react with fats to form, slope, to form soap and glycerol. This process is called saponification. This is going to be a key word that you have to remember. And if you memorize saponification is making soap, that's usually good for a point on the regions. Now, acids has a pH of lower than 7. Bases have a pH of higher than 7. A dilute base is going to taste bitter. So bases have a bitter flavor to them. Not that we're going to taste them in the lab. Where acids will turn phenolphthalein clear, a base will turn phenolphthalein pink. Where acids turn litmus red, bases turn litmus blue. And where acids turn bromothymol blue yellow, bases turn bromothymol blue blue. And base, acids and bases neutralize each other, so bases neutralize acids. Now we name bases, we just follow the same rules for naming any ionic compound, where we have the name of the metal ion first, and with a Roman numeral if necessary, followed by usually hydroxide, or with the one exception of the most common one here, we'll talk about it in a minute, ammonia, or the most common exception, I should say. So if we have FeOH2, that would be iron hydroxide. In this case, since OH is minus 1, well, there's 1, Fe is a plus 2, so it's iron 2 hydroxide, because remember, this means the oxidation state, not how many of them there are. If the iron has a plus 3, then it's iron 3 hydroxide. Aluminum hydroxide. Okay. When we put NH3, ammonia, in water, the same thing as NH4, OH becomes ammonium hydroxide. All right, so let's think about neutralization. You know, we've been, I said a couple of times how acids and bases neutralize each other. And it's basically because acids tend to give up a proton, an H+. Bases tend to give up an OH-, which combine to form water. And neutralization reactions are a type of double replacement where the acid and base neutralize each other and make water and a salt. For example, hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide. Right? The hydrochloric acid is going to become an H plus and an OH minus when it's dissolved in water. The sodium hydroxide is going to become, I'm sorry, the hydrochloric acid is going to become an H plus and a Cl minus when dissolved in water. The sodium hydroxide is going to become an Na plus and an OH minus when dissolved in water. Well, the H plus and the OH minus make HOH or H2O water. The Na plus and the Cl minus, the same thing as table salt. So back in the day, chemistry teachers would actually mix hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide, mix them together, and drink it because it's salt water. Nowadays, we're a lot more concerned about safety, so you're not going to see me doing that. Now, another neutralization reaction, if you have uh, sulfuric acid, H2SO4, and potassium hydroxide, right, a double replacement reaction, so you end up the potassium replaces the hydrogens, the hydrogens replace the potassium, and we end up with K2SO4 and water. Okay, so it's a double replacement neutralization reaction. So based on that, what do you think is going to happen with HBr reacting with lithium hydroxide?
Right, give that a try, and we'll talk about it in school tomorrow. So I told you I was going to talk a little more about pH later, so here we go. The way the pH scale works is pH of 7 is neutral. Okay? Anything lower than 7 is acidic, and the lower it gets, the more acidic it is. So it becomes more acidic as we travel to the left. A pH above 7 is basic and it becomes more basic as we travel to the right. Now the scale is what's called logarithmic. We're not going to worry about the mathematical term there. But a change of 1 in pH is a tenfold increase in acid or base strength. So as we go from a pH of 5 to a pH of 4, the acid is 10 times stronger, not just one time stronger. We go from a pH of 4 to pH 3, it's 10 times more stronger. So going from a 5 to a 3, it's not 20 times stronger, it's actually 100 times stronger, because we keep multiplying by a factor of 10. So a pH of 4 is 10 times more acidic than a pH of 5. A pH is 12, is 10 times more acidic than a pH of 11, but it's 100 times, I'm sorry, 10 times, a pH of 12 is 10 times more basic than a pH of 11, but it's 100 times more basic than a pH of 10. All right, a common question on the regents deals with what's called indicators, and it's just based right on table M. All right, so here's how these work. With methyl orange, if the pH is less than 3.2, it's going to be red. If pH is greater than 4.4, it's going to be yellow. Right? In between, it's an indeterminate color, not listed on this table, so we're not going to worry about that. But bromothymol blue, if pH is less than 6, it's going to be yellow. If pH is less gr greater than 7.6, it'll be blue. So phenolphthalein when the pH gets lower than 8.2, it's clear, colorless, greater, it's pink, and so on, and so on, and so forth. So, at a pH of 2, methyl orange, what color is that going to be? It'll be red. At a pH of 2, bromothymol blue, what color will that be? That will be yellow. At a pH of 2, phenolphthalein will be colorless. At a pH of 2, litmus will be red. At a pH of 2, bromerosol green. Sorry, the eyes are going, and it's not a good copy here. Bromerosol green is going to be yellow. And at a pH of 2, thymol blue will also be yellow. So with indicators, we don't have to memorize any of them. They're right on the reference table. All right. So far, right, we were talking about the Arrhenius, Arrhenius theory of acids, which always, for it to be valid, the acids and bases must be in an aqueous solution because without water, they're not really going to do much anyway. Another theory that doesn't cover every acid and base, like the first one I learned when I was in chemistry was called the bronsted lowry theory. And for that, an acid is defined as was def, an acid was defined as a proton donor, meaning it gives up a proton in a reaction. H plus is a proton, right? So HCl gives up an H plus, and a Cl minus is left behind. So it was a proton donor. So it was an acid. A base, on the other hand, referred to as a proton acceptor, where it would gain a proton in a reaction. So for example, you have HNO3 and H2O. The HNO3 gives up an H+, plus, okay? and the water accepts the H+. Plus. So the water here was a base. The HNO3 was an acid. Now, another important term that we didn't talk about yet was every acid has a conjugate 
base. Okay, so when the HNO3 gives up the acid, the NO3 minus is its conjugate base. Every base has a conjugate acid. So the water, the base, now it has an extra proton, the H3O plus is its conjugate acid. Okay. So since the HNO3 lost NH plus during the reaction, it's an acid. Since the H2O gained that proton, it is a base. All right, just like last time, expect the not-so-pop, not-so-surprise quiz in school. So I strongly recommend anything you didn't quite get, go back and watch again. All right, that brings us to the end, and I'll see you guys in school.